and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, President Buhari restates commitments to delivering his promises on security, tackling corruption and repositioning the economy. Nigeria moves to seal new economic relations as Vice President Oshibajo leads federal government delegation to the 2018 World Economic Forum holding in Davos, Switzerland. Experts brainstorm on Wales to deal with violent extremism in Nigeria at the Oluyemi Adeniji Foundation Symposium in Lagos. And former football star George Weir takes over as Liberia's president, vows to transform the lives of the country's citizens. Tonight, EcoBank Research Group expects Nigeria's economy to expand by 2.6% in 2018, consolidating recovery from recession. On sports news, Hyung Jung becomes the first Korean player to reach the quarterfinals of the Grand Slam after beating six-time Open champion Nova Djokovic 7-6, 7-5, 7-6 in the fourth round. And from Abuja, FCT chief judge meets with lawyers handling high-profile corruption cases to discuss ways of fast-tracking the trials. We begin tonight with the president's reassurance that his government will deliver on all its promises to Nigerians, especially security of lives and property, blocking financial loopholes in the economy and creating employment opportunities for the youths. President Muhammadu Buhari restated his pledge when a delegation of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group visited him at the State House. Now, he says the initial challenge posed by the recession was already dwindling with the economic economy posting better results on falling inflation rates, higher foreign reserve and better ranking on ease of doing business. The president's spokesperson, Mr. Femi Adishino, quotes him in a statement saying, if you look critically into the 2018 budget, we've already taken into account key issues of more stable electricity, construction of roads and rail and the airport's concession, end of quote. President Buhari says his government will work towards increasing momentum in agriculture, energy, manufacturing and processing. The president also gave the assurance that security forces will be deployed to vulnerable areas across the country to contain the increasing attacks on communities by herdsmen. Meanwhile, President Buhari is being endorsed for a second term in office ahead of the 2019 presidential election by leaders of the All Progressives Congress in the Southeast. The Southeast delegation affirmed their support today when they visited the president at the State House in Abuja. A member of the delegation and Minister of Science and Technology, Ubunaya Ono, says they're happy with his performance. But they want the president to link the southeast with the ongoing rail line projects across the country. Mr. Ono also gave President Buhari the assurance that the party is working hard to ensure they win elections in the region. The uh, APC leadership in the southeast uh, met uh, on the 31st of December last year uh, in Uburu and uh, endorsed uh, the president uh, for uh, second term. And we've come today uh, to reaffirm that and to uh, assure Mr. President that the party is working very hard to win elections uh, in future elections. When you are building a railway network, it's important that all major commercial towns uh, are linked up by rail and also gas distribution. And the president gave direct instructions that this should be done. And uh, we are very happy. It's not, good, it's not just good for the South, it's good for the nation. So we, we, we mentioned all this. And um, yes, we also uh, thanked uh, the president for the role that uh, under his leadership the federal government is playing with respect to the burial of uh, uh, one of our very great sons, uh, the former vice president of this great nation, uh, Dr. Alex Okweme. Uh, and um, you know, I, we asked the president that the people of the South East would be happy uh, if a national asset is named after him. 
And still on the 2019 elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission is seeking stronger partnership with the United Nations to build the capacity of its staff ahead of the polls. At a meeting with the UN delegation in Abuja that INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Gakubu highlighted six critical areas where the Commission needs the UN's intervention. These include voter education, electoral conflict resolution and capacity building for political parties. Representatives of the United Nations, the chairman of INEC, as well as INEC's national commissioners are here in this hall to synergize ahead of the 2019 general election. The meeting is a follow-up to an earlier request by the INEC chairman to the United Nations for assistance in the conduct of the 2019 general election. This is what, they call a, what we call a needs assess, assessment mission, an electoral needs assessment mission, which basically responds to a request by uh, the relevant entities in a, in a given country. The UN does not just you know, deploy missions without uh, being invited. So that's why I wanted to emphasize, first of all, uh, our appreciation that, uh, that uh, once again, the UN has been considered as a, an important partner to, to work with the Commission. And uh, the main objective is really to work together and see uh, the context in which the elections will be, are being prepared and together identify areas where the Commission may see fit to have the UN uh, collaborating with it, as, as was the case uh, in the past. The chairman of INEC lists critical areas. The Commission seeks the intervention of the United Nations in the coming general election. We wish to highlight the following areas of support. One, capacity building for Commission staff. Two, voter education and sensitization. Three, the electoral legal framework. Four, capacity building for political parties. Five, electoral conflict mitigation. And six, inclusiveness, particularly of women, youth, and persons with disabilities. INEC is not seeking the support of the international community alone. It's also soliciting the support of the judiciary, especially that of the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court for quick dispensation of election-related litigations. February 2019 has been proposed by INEC for the general election. As that date gets closer, political watchers are hoping that the whole process leading to the elections will be credible. Global trade, geopolitics, terrorism and security will be at the center of global attention as nations gather for the 2018 edition of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemir Shibaju, who is leading the federal government delegation, is expected to participate in some of the fora designed specifically to discuss issues which concern Nigeria. Our business news editor, Bosun Amofai, takes a look at what could possibly be the key talking points, starting from the just-released World Economic Outlook by the IMF. Uh, to introduce the International Monetary Fund today released a new World Economic Outlook report showing a growth pickup in Sub-Saharan Africa from 2.7% in 2017 to 3.3% in 2018 and further to 3.5% in 2019. The report released by IMF Chief Christine Lagarde in Davos, Switzerland, ahead of the World Economic Forum for 2018, shows a modest upgrade to the growth forecast for Nigeria, but a more subdued prospect for South Africa. Global growth has been accelerating since 2016, and all signs point, point to a continuous strengthening of that growth this year in 2018 and next year in 2019. So this is very welcome news. I think we have to wait. The latest report will form part of the discussions at the Guardian of World Leaders, top business executives and policymakers meeting in Davos from Tuesday. Leading the Nigerian delegation for the third time is the Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibajo, alongside the Ministers of Finance, Budget and National Planning, and that of Industry, Trade and Investment. But while major discussions at the freezing cold apps of Davos will be on world geopolitics, global trade and terrorism, 
The Nigerian delegation is expected to warm up existing relationships and hammer out new economic and trade relations in view of the international shifts in alliances and trade positions. The Nigerian team will also showcase what has been achieved out of the 2016 economic recession, the plans to balance the budgets, implement the new economic and recovery growth plan, as well as calm investors' nerves ahead of the electioneering process leading to 2019 general elections in the first quarter. Bosin Nomofaye, Channels Television News. Well, let's talk a bit more about this meeting. I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by the Chairman National Economic Summit Group, Mr. Kiari Buka from Abuja. Thanks a lot for joining us on the news at 10. Thank you, Ijoma. President is leading this delegation. Uh, are you on the delegation? And I'm asking that because many business leaders like yourself in the private sector don't seem to be part of this trip. What's your impression about that? If is that so? Uh, well, I have never been a, uh, one that would want to prefer being in sub-zero temperature uh, <laughs> rather than warm and toasty Abuja. Um, but, but I have work to do here, so I didn't make it to Davos. All right. Well, let me just start by asking you what message Nigeria is taking to Davos. And by that, I'm talking about strategic partnerships, negotiations. What sort of discussions are we bringing to the table? Uh, I, I think from my point of view, um, there are a number of things that Nigeria um, must tell her story uh, to Davos and beyond, for that matter. Uh, and those are, one, that uh, we are open for business. Um, the uncertainties that investors have shown uh, fairly recently um, have been turned around, especially with the INE window. Uh, which the central bank governor um, instituted sometime in the latter part of last year. Um, and the other thing is that the, uh, the uptick of 24 positions uh, in the world, uh, um, in the ease of doing business, uh, which Nigeria has moved from a position of 169 to 145 in the world. And we in the Nigerian Economic Summit Group uh, we, number one, commend the Nigerian government for that uh, and for those um, uh, fiat. But we also are saying that uh, those are not enough. We have to do a lot more and we have to tell our story such that um, the positives that we present to the world uh, outweigh the negatives that we see in the press and media. So essentially it is Nigeria um, showcasing Nigeria uh, and the attractiveness and competitiveness that the country is going to present uh, at Davos. And in terms of showcasing Nigeria and doing more, like you were talking about earlier on, this is an annual profiled global gathering. How do you think we can actually leverage on our participation? Because many people say there's a lot of talk when we're at such summits. And then we, agreements are not binding on either party. We come back and prepare for the next year. So how do you think we can leverage on, on, on this sort of global meeting? Uh, I think the effectiveness or the efficacy of uh, such an outing usually lies on what um, we can get out of uh, as a nation uh, because we have to focus and we have to tell our story. The important thing is that some of these um, indices and some of these um, global uh, uh, analysis of Nigeria vis-a-vis -vis, uh, other countries of the world are showing that Nigeria is improving on most counts. There are some areas where we still need um, to be cognizant and pay attention to, such as infrastructure, um, electricity, uh, energy area, and also uh, deregulation in the petroleum uh, sector as well. There are a few pockets where you will not see foreign investors rushing into. However, overall, there is the attractiveness of the returns or the type of returns that Nigeria presents to the world. So all of those are things that we need to share. Now, the problem is in how we articulate those and how we as a nation would 
enact policies that at the end of the day will be beneficial and will be seen as attractive compared to somebody taking their money somewhere else. Because foreign investors generally have choices. There are 196 or so countries out there. And so who, why should I bring my money to Nigeria why, when I have an option of investing in Ghana or Kenya? Now, those are the kind of competition or competitiveness that we have to position ourselves. And no one can tell the story of Nigeria better than Nigerians. In terms of picking ourselves up, I mean, we understand that you met with the NESG, met with the president today. What were some of the takeaways from that, from that meeting that you had? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's one of our uh, normally annual rituals, and uh, this is where we met with Mr. President, and he was gracious enough to give us enough time uh, for us to present uh, with, to him the, um, the report from the 23rd Nigerian Economic Summit, which took place last October, as well as the 2018 macroeconomic outlook, basically our projection of how things are going to look like in 2018. In addition to that, in my own uh, presentation where we laid out uh, and number one, we commended the government, uh, this government, for some of the achievements that, have, that we've seen, such as the foreign reserves okay. rising, uh, the addressing pragmatic approach to, uh, to the issues in the Niger Delta, such that okay. oil, pr oil production levels have improved uh, over the course of the year, uh, 2017, right. as well as some other you know, All six right. I'm afraid or I'm... so issues that we have shared as challenges. And uh, Mr. All President right. addressed all of those issues quite uh, commendably. All right, Mr. Kerr, I'm afraid I'm going to have to interject and stop you there now. But thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with Chairman National Economic Summit Group, Mr. Kiari Buka, for sharing your thoughts on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you. And in part two, after the break, Nigeria and U.S. inaugurate Joint Security Governance Committee to tackle terrorism here in Nigeria. Please stay with us.